Hi, Tim from The Tiger here. Today we're talking about one of those big talking points for expats and of course people from overseas looking at or interested in Thailand, and that is property. And the man on the spot is Brennan Campbell, the CEO of Fazwaz, because we want to know what's been happening over the past 18 months and how it's impacted the market. Welcome, Brennan. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me. So let's look at the, the trends across the board and uh, what's sort of happening at the moment. Okay, so I think regardless of who you are as a stakeholder in the industry, the biggest trend at the moment is just change. It's change everywhere. Right. So if you look at developers, it's a change in what they're conceptualizing and what they're building. It's a change in the offering to the clients. I mean, guaranteed rental returns in a market where there's nobody coming here, right. a little far-fetched. Uh, if you look at Agents, real estate agents, COVID has kind of cleansed out a big population of the people that had maybe short-term interest in staying here. The and, white shoe brigade, I think we call them. Okay. <laughs> and last but not least is the consumer trends, which is kind of what we're going to talk about today. So trends have changed. People are looking for different properties and COVID has impacted that. Okay. Let's check out some of the stats. One of the, the first key trends we're seeing across all markets with a focus on the resort markets today is a shift in interest. And you can see that demand in Phuket has really softened um, compared to other years. And that's largely because it was, it's a market that's driven by international investors. And if you can't come to Phuket, then the investment's probably, as a, as a pure rental return, not the best. C can I just ask about that, though? Are people still buying without looking at the property. People are still buying. So there's a lot of transactions happening. Who's buying and what they're buying has changed. Uh, and we're selling about 20 to 30% of our transactions are remote buyers that love Thailand, understand Thailand, and know that they want a property here. All right, well, let's uh, go from the, the wide picture, the big picture to a bit more specific. Let's head to Phuket. So looking at Phuket, again, driven by international investors, one of the key trends is the fact that people are looking for holiday homes, secondary homes. So they're looking to get away from cities like Bangkok or more congested areas and access something not as an investment, but as a place that they can go and relax and get away from people, essentially. Yeah. Um, so looking at that, that's the key trend number one. And when you look at Phuket as a market, the, 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 the focus has been more on domestic buying power. So you have, in the past, international investors, as I said, coming to Thailand, looking to invest, get a return, that, that, that's not happening. So the domestic market, the buying power is with them, and they're driving a lot of the purchases in Phuket. Uh, across the board, are people looking for bargains? Do they believe that at this time there are bargains to be had, or the desire for people to get out of the big cities into seaside and out of city locations, is that keeping the prices up? It's a, it's a mix, it's a mix of both things. So you do have, again, along the line of looking at non-Thai nationals that aren't accessing their properties, they're not getting a return. So there are motivated sellers where I'm not using it, I can't rent it, it's costing me money, let's get this thing sold. Flip side is the domestic market that they're looking, of course, where deals are available, everybody likes a deal but ultimately they're looking for properties that suit more their personal requirements and that make a great holiday home. All right, from Phuket, let's head across the other side of the Isthmus of Kra to uh, Koh Samui in the Gulf of Thailand. Looking at Samui, the, the, the main trend here is actually just the lack of interest from the domestic market. So all the other markets that we're going to look at, they're predominantly driven by um, the domestic market, 65%, where you see Samui, it's growing in popularity uh, amongst the domestic market, but it is the least preferred destination. Why? Good question. Um, we can look at the, the, the trends are the same in terms of a secondary, uh, secondary home, but in terms of access, uh, accessibility, it's, it's got its challenges sure. um, for a quick weekend getaway right. and potentially the cost in, in, in flying there as well versus a, a drive-in market versus the fly-in markets. But what we're seeing in Koh Samui is a higher price point. So you can see uh, based on the unit sold that Samui is largely a villa market versus a condominium market, okay. and that's what's uh, increasing those prices. Is it that partly to do with the local planning requirements or just the... Demand. Yeah, exactly right, with zoning. So with setback regulations, it's difficult to um, actually get land that's affordable that you can um, develop on. Okay, well, from the beautiful islands in the south up to Pattaya, what's happening up there? 
Pattaya is very much a condominium market. So, and, and it's kind of a, a good indication of what the mass market is in Thailand. And you can see the units sold in terms of the price range. 70% essentially is under 5 million baht. So that's mass market. You can see uh, the sold unit types, one bedrooms. And again, strong interest from the domestic market at nearly 65%. So a big change from Koh Samui, for example, which was mostly villas. This is mostly condos and small apartments. Mostly condos, small apartments, but we are seeing uh, across all segments, and particularly the last market that we're going to look at, is this growing segment of 5 to 12 million baht, which is focused on um, larger landed properties. And again, towards that trend of wanting to use it yourself, right? You want the space, you want the gardens. Well, the big sleeper in this, and probably the star in these statistics, is on the other side of the Gulf, which is Hua Hin. If you can have, I guess, a star of the pandemic, I suppose yes. this, this, this would be it. Yeah. You can see that when it comes to uh, motivation, you've got a hockey stick from Canada. So there's your hockey stick of you know, people looking for holiday homes. That's the main trend. And as a drive-in market, largely from Bangkok, and that, that domestic driven power, that that's who's coming and that's who's buying. Uh, and you can see that it's reflected across the sold units by type in that Hua Hin as a destination has 1 million baht condos that are slightly inland. They have 30 million baht condos that are right on the beach, sea views. They have two, three million baht landed property inland and 70 million baht villas. So there's a little bit of something for everybody in the market. So why is this the gold star at the moment? Is it because it's like three hour drive from Bangkok? There, you can't get flights into Hua Hin. Why is it doing so well? It's the combination of those two things, accessibility and just in terms of product, that there's just something for everybody. Now, we are because we're seeing such demand in Hua Hin, there's this new wave of development that's coming in now. So it's going to push the designs in Hua Hin. It's going to give people more choice in terms of you know, uh, newer concepts, wellness concepts. Uh, so developers, as I said at the beginning, in terms of change, are having to rethink how they conceptualize their projects versus profit and cramming everything in to make it something that's actually desirable by the end consumer based on all the trends that we're seeing today. Okay, well, Professor Brennan, I'm going to get you to put your, uh, get your crystal ball out, and we've spoken about what's been happening with the trends over the past 12 months. What's going to happen over the next 12 months? We're going to continue to see change. Um, and I think for anybody that's followed Thailand real estate for a long time, that's probably refreshing to hear. It's time for change. We need some positive things to happen in this market from the way that developments are built, the transparency of developers, uh, making sure that the projects that are being built are conceptualized based on data, you know, based on market insights. And looking at the agents and servicing the market, it's, it's just time for change. COVID has caused a lot of challenge across the real estate industry, but it's time for a smarter, more efficient way to look at real estate across Thailand. So apart from the four we looked at, are there any rising stars you can give us a tip on? Uh, we're seeing some of the, the kind of smaller areas, Koh Phang Nga, um, some of the other islands that are seeing more and more interest. So these are areas that are largely underserviced uh, in terms of developers and in terms of real estate agents that are kind of broadening the, 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 the six traditional markets here in Thailand. Okay, Brennan Campbell, the CEO of Fazwaz. Thank you very much for bringing us up to date with these trends. And of course, you can go to fazwaz.com to uh, search out your ideal property. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for joining the Tiger. We look forward to seeing you next time.